Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure Comedy from Waikiki Beach. At Deep Adventure Ministries, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And today we have a wild adventure for you. We have Dr. Ray Garendi joining us. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I just got to let everybody know this weekend we had big surf in Waikiki. We started out with Cindy and I paddling out past a place here called Canoes, which is where all the outrigger canoes paddle and a lot of the beginner surfers learn. And we went way out past a place called First Point, way out past Canoes, a good eighth of a mile, a quarter of a mile out. And we did that by, by paddling along the uh, horizontally along the coast for a little bit and then working our way through diff- deeper channels in the reef. And finally, we got ourselves out uh, to where there was probably 16 to 18 foot faces on the waves without really getting worked at all because we knew our path out through the channels. We knew where the reef was deeper and the waves wouldn't break. And then Cindy waited and waited. It's kind of like when you're praying, you kind of wait on the Lord and you wait for that perfect set uh, and you wait for God to move before you move. And then here came a monster wave and she paddled with all her might. And, uh, and I paddled alongside her to kind of, uh, to kind of uh, just to make sure she was going to be okay. I didn't think she was going to make the drop. She made the drop, so I made the drop alongside her about 15 yards away. And then I thought, she's not going to stand up. So I was kind of proning and kneeling, just getting ready to save her. And then she stood up, and she rolled this wave, this towering wave all the way in. And I was so proud of her. But that's, that's what we are like as, as Catholics. You know, we, we know where the deep channels are. We know... We know uh, where we can find the depth and the power of, of Catholic teaching. Uh, there's so many different areas, but if you just spend time in the catechism, it'll take you there. But then once you paddle out, it's time to wait on the Lord. And we don't, we, you know, especially, you know, uh, so many people that are involved in ministry get so vo- involved in the ministry, uh, honestly, it's almost like, yeah, like, like you can leave God behind because you're so busy doing the stuff that you're not, you're not serving him your primary ministry is to serve him and 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 so and to love him and to love him back and so uh and so you we all need to learn how to wait and we waited and big sets came through and big sets came through and then came the monster wave and cindy paddled with all her might which is what you need to be as a catholic you need to be totally sold out totally determined with all your might love the lord the god with all the heart soul strength and mind and then she dropped in and then she stood up. And that's what we need to do as Catholics. We need to stand up for our faith. And, 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 then, and then follow the leading of the Lord. When you surf, you don't tell the wave where you want to go. The wave tells you to go right, to go left, to do a cutback, so that you always stay in the most powerful part of the wave. And she did that. That's what we as, as Catholics need to do. And we have a guest with us today. He's just just love this guy. I told a friend of mine, I'm going to have Dr. Ray on. And he goes, oh, really? I can hardly wait. Let me know when, when the show's going to air. Dr. Ray Garandi is with us. Um, and he, he's very famous. He's pretty much known for having a wife that can do more push-ups than him. Dr. Ray, aloha. Well, I'll tell you, Bear, I was looking for some of them big waves, you know. But in that kiddie pool I have in the backyard, it's just just hard to get something going. As soon as I put the board in, there's no place to go. But I'm working on it. Yeah, you need to get someone to push that side of the edge of it to send send the waves to send your waves. Okay. All right. I knew that. I knew I was doing something wrong. I didn't couldn't figure out quite what it was. That's the first time I've ever heard you say you were doing something wrong. So you're growing in humility. You're growing in humility. Well, I was wrong. No, no, I was (laughs) wrong back in 1987. (laughs) And, and that was because I thought I was wrong, and I really wasn't wrong. So I guess you could say I yeah, was so you wrong, were wrong in thinking I was you wrong. You were wrong yeah. thinking you were wrong. 1987. Yeah. 87, yeah. Hey, so, Dr. Ray. <laughs> so, so, Ray, you know what? I, we really want to – we love having you on the show, and we wanted to talk today about cherishing your woman, you know, and because you're an expert in, 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 in family life and in, 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 as a counselor – and uh, I think one of the primary lessons a man needs to learn, whether, you know, it, it, cherishing your wife, cherishing other women, if you're a young man, uh, maybe if you're in high school, a lot of, we have a lot of young men listening to the show, 
uh, the woman, the woman or the women that God has in your life. Uh, there's a woman, the very precious woman, Mary, and then of course the bride of Christ, the the church. But I wondered if you could, if we could just launch into the deep right now and, and talk about what's on your, what is your thoughts and concerns about how as men we can cherish our our wives or or the woman in our in our lives if we're if we're on our way towards towards a relationship or marriage. Bear, let me start by just looking around me here, checking back there. Yeah, I have to make sure she's not listening. Oh yeah, don't I tell don't her. Wanna, I don't want to say something, then she's going to poke her head in the door and say, you don't do that. Why are you saying that just for Bear and his audience? So I'll make sure she's not around. Okay. I got several questions. I'll several warn you. I'll warn guys. you if I see her sneak, sneak her If you in. see her, but I can't see back there. Okay. <laughs> several questions for the guys. Who are you nicest to? Now, I hate to use that word because it's such a fluffy word, nice. However, would your wife say, my husband treats me better than he treats anyone else. Mm. Women will tell me all the time, I wish I had one-tenth of my husband's kindness that all these women at work talk about with him. Mm. I wish I had one, one half of how nice he laughs with his buddies than he does with me. So the question becomes, who are you most loving to? And it better be your wife says that. And if she doesn't say that, then you got to do two things. First step, you ask her why she thinks that. What is it about me that you think that I'm much nicer with other people than I am with you? Okay, that's the first question. Then the second question is, tell me, don't ask me, tell me what I need to do. And don't get defensive, men. Don't say, well, well, I already do that. Well, no, no, no. But the only reason I do that is because, no, no, no. Just listen to what the woman says to you. And you want her. I'll give you six months. You ask her, give me six months. And at the end of six months, I want you to be able to say, my husband treats me with more gentleness and kindness than he treats anybody else. Now that's the challenge. And part of that is how, how do you how do you activate that? I, I know one of the biggest things is 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 um, you know I love it when I come home from surfing or whatever I'm doing and I walk in the door and I see my beautiful bride and as soon as I can I'll say tell me everything about it tell me everything about your day and I really want to know everything and sometimes I kind of actually I may be annoyed her because I really do want to know I want to listen to her. That's another step. I will ask people in my, in my office, they're in there for marriage counseling, and I'll say to the guy, now why does your wife think that you undercut her discipline? And Bear, I'll tell you, a good part of the time, the guys will say, oh, I don't know. And I'll say, have you asked her? Mm. Uh, oh, well, I just, she just says I do that. Well, well, do you know why she thinks you do that? Uh, I should probably ask her now, huh? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're absolutely right. There's a, there's a section in a book I wrote years ago on marriage where I said, there's a section that said, ask questions. Mm. That's what you do when you walk in. Tell me about your day. Okay, that's a question. What about your day today I want to hear? That's a question. You're saying, I'm interested. And I think that's the easiest way to have a decent conversation with your wife because we men are not as good at conversing as women are. They're just naturally better at it, all right? A woman will come into my office and she'll be able to describe that marriage up one side, down the other. And I'll ask the guy, what do you think? Uh, well, I, I thought everything was pretty good. I thought, <laughs> I, thought I was doing okay. I said, okay, she's better at it than you are. So if you're not a good communicator, it's real simple ask questions why do you think that i don't stick up for you with your mother mm. when do i do that when was the last time i did it what happened then what did i do exactly get down to it find out i always say you want to have a good marriage you got to know your spouse's head so often women will say, my best friend knows me 10 times better than my husband knows me. Mm. He doesn't seem to be interested. Well, doggone it, ask her. Find out. You know, a couple of things come to my mind. 
One is that recently we we're going to a wedding in a, in a couple of weeks, and my wife has been – it's difficult shopping in Hawaii anyway, so she's been trying to order certain dresses online. And, and it's just so cool, Ray, because uh, she'll begin to talk about her, these shoes that she bought or this dress that she bought. And uh, it, it could be like for some men just wah, 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 like, like a Charlie <laughs> Brown, right, the classroom. But I love it. She's sharing something very precious to her as a woman. You know, this dr- dress fits me this way. Do the shoes fit me? Um, um, I really like this material, but not the cut of the dress. And I'm like, she's talking with me. And, and, and then when I really take an interest in it, I actually do. I am very interested. It's, it's not like I'm just trying to um, patronize her. I am very, very interested. And she, and she will open up and share with me about that. And maybe if she'll share with me about that, then she'll learn that she can share with me about other things too. Another another way that we that we uh, we we spend time together is usually in the mornings. We do the the office of the readings or the daily mass readings. And when I read them, then I always ask her, "So what did you think about that?" And it's amazing how sometimes she goes, "Well, she doesn't have anything to say," you know, like a lot of us. But sometimes, most of the time, she'll she'll have a real insight that I never thought that way about that scripture or she'll have a she'll have a, a question about something that makes us both kind of ponder so uh getting to know someone going through the daily mass readings is a great way because the bible becomes uh, the, the the bible and, and thus the lord becomes kind of the, the the point of your conversation one of the problems people have is they always want to talk about problems <laughs> How about talking about the good things? How was your day? What good things happened for you today? We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi, a good friend of mine. Um, I admire him in a lot of ways. I know his wife does more push-ups than him, but in, other than that, I would say he's a man's man. <laughs> Actually, you do more than her, right? But she's, she's I do more than I could do more than she does. Yeah, I got but her on pull-ups she, too. But she's man. awesome, though. But she's awesome. I know she <laughs> she broke some kind of record, I think, with push-ups at one point. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. This is Daniel the Boom Markham with another episode of Country Up, God's Humor. God just might have a sense of humor. I believe the scriptures show us as much. Some of you are thinking, that's the darndest thing to say. Even sacrilegious, be careful there, boy. Well, just look at his creation. Take a gander at the spiny lump sucker or the fried-eyed jellyfish or the naked mole rat or the red-lipped batfish. Funny as gold darn looking critters. Makes you smile just calling them by their names, you old spiny lump sucker, you. There's a time Mary with chutzpah only a Jewish mama could muster. Verbally waved her hand with confidence at the wedding servants. Do whatever he tells you. Moving Jesus to conduct his first miracle, unplanned as it was. Never underestimate the power of a mama. Take the time after the resurrection when Jesus appeared to his boys on the Sea of Galilee. Advise a more careful run at John 21. Instead of dramatic like on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus casually cooking breakfast on the beach, saunters out of the shoreline fog, nonchalantly calling out to his boys, Lads, have you caught anything? Having been skunked after fishing all night, Jesus directs, Boys, put the net on the other side of the boat. The light goes on as John recognizes this is a repeat when his fishing buds and he were first called by Jesus. He shouts out, it's the Lord. Completely in character, Peter leaps out of the boat and swims to Jesus, leaving his fishing partners to slowly drag the massive catch ashore. Jesus set the boys up. Do you think maybe, just maybe Jesus was smiling, if not laughing at Peter hightailing it from ship to shore? He's got to have a sense of humor. After all, he created you. Funnier yet, he created me. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have something so incredible. You know, we've been praying about the ministry and which direction the Lord wants to take us. And then there was just this inspiration. A good friend of mine, Matthew Leonard, 
from Next Level Catholic uh, uh, suggested this. And you know what we're doing, or showed me how to do it. And we've created a, an online school of manliness. A lot of you know about Bear's Man Cave. Uh, it's a secret Facebook group that's for men only. But now we've taken that man cave off of Facebook, and it's on our own community um, type site in, in, our, in our new Bear School of Manliness.com site. And so all the Man Cave members are, are, are there now, so we don't have to go on Facebook and be subject to all their whims and rules and all the kind of uh, um, negative and, uh, you know, all the, all the things that we don't like about Facebook. We have that. We have the community for the men, the Bears Man Cave. And we also have that for the women, by the way, the Mama Bears. But in the Man Cave, you can join that Man Cave, become part of that school, that, 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 that group of men who will challenge you and help you grow in the Lord. But then we actually have a school. If you want to subscribe to the school, that's, that's an additional element to it. And in there, you receive mentoring. You receive, there's, there's a three-year cycle of lessons, 36 lessons about different rules for manliness. And we have inspirational videos and we have, uh, we have uh, lessons. We also have a toolkit for you so that you can uh, do self-assessment of where you are in the different <clears throat> areas of your life and how to set SMART goals in each of those areas. SMART meaning, <clears throat> you probably know it means a goal that you need to grow to become, um, and, and, uh, how you will do that, what the timing is for you to reach those goals. So we have that. We have a place for you to journal. We have a place for you to keep metrics. So when we mean school, we really mean school. And remember... Um, thinking of the school of the prophets in the Old Testament, you know, in the time of uh, Elijah and Obadiah, there were a hundred members of the school of the prophets, and it is a school. And the, how do we learn as men? We learn by doing. And so, in in the man cave and in the school of manliness, you're joined with other men as you're going through this process. Some of it is with the other men, some of it is private. But uh, we would uh, encourage you to go to bear schoolofmanliness.com and, and, and find out more about what we're up to. We have Dr. Ray Garendi with us right now. I want to ask you this, this question, Ray. <clears throat> what, what is a couple of, speaking of this concept of getting traction, you really want to find out where you are and then like where should I be and then getting traction when you set that new course. <clears throat> what is a, a two or three or four things that a man can do every day or every week or every month that will give him traction, that he can actually say, I can write it in his calendar, I'm going to bring my wife a flower every day, or I'm gonna bring my, I'm gonna spend 10, you know, what, what are things like that that men can set actual goals in, in their lives to, to, to uh, strengthen their relationship with the woman in their lives? Before I answer your question, I have a couple questions of my own for you, Bear. Hmm. I applied to your school of manliness three times and was rejected. Now, I don't understand that. <laughs> it was based okay? on your life. That's what's so phenomenal. Or I think I'm as sensitive <laughs> as the next guy. That, now, I do have a day-to-day -day piece of advice that guys better be careful about. This is, this is, this is minefield stuff. Mm -hmm. If a woman says to you, you talked about your wife buying a dress and buying the shoes and how interested you were. Now, that's nice. And I am. I really am. Yeah. If she says, Bear, does this dress make my backside look big? <laughs> if you hesitate for one nanosecond, no matter what you say after that, if you say no, not at all, but you hesitate, you you're can't even dead say man. no. You have to say no. You look, you're, you're, you're dead. You're, you're dead. beautiful. So don't you're just beautiful. hesitate. You make that dress look beautiful. Answer the question before. If she says, "Does this dress make my no?" That's what you do. <laughs> you say it before she asks. Well, that's it. Where's now, the wizard from Dr. Ray Garendi? Okay, well, we can end the interview right here. <laughs> now to answer your question. Back when you were courting your wife, you were probably a pretty man, manly, mannerly guy. You said, please, yes. you said, thank you. You were courteous. Open you the door, open the car door. Yes. There's a law I have, Bear, called the law of social entropy. Do you remember, mm. you know what the law of physical entropy is? Yes, I, I, I did watch that on, on uh, I think it was <laughs> Star Trek or something one time. <laughs> it means everything it decays. Yeah. Everything ultimately decays. The law of social entropy says that we lose the stuff that was our good behavior as the relationship goes on. Wow. I don't, I don't compliment you like I used to. I, oh, man, when I first started dating you, I was the sweetest guy in the world, man. I was complimenting you all the time. Boy, you look mm. great tonight, honey. Glad to take you out and show you off. Yeah, when was the last time you said that, boys? Mm -hmm. Or my manners. 
I used to say please, I used to say thank you. Now, hey honey, give me a cup of coffee, would you? And she puts it in front of me, I don't say thank you, I don't say please, none of that. We get sloppy, we get lazy in the relationship. It mm -hmm. should go the other way. Mm -hmm. If this person in your mind is the most important person in your life, then everything that you do, whether it's manners, one of the things I suggested in one of my books, I said, make a list. Yeah. And they said, what, what's that? I said, well, make a list of all the things you like about her. Mm -hmm. Now, they got to be positive. You can't say things like, you don't always smell bad. You know, <laughs> your breath doesn't stink in the morning. No, 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 no. There's got to be good things. Mm -hmm. And if you have a hard time coming up with a lot of good things, the problem is you. Mm -hmm. The problem is not her. Mm -hmm. Make a list. What my wife and I used to do when we were first married, now we haven't done this for a while, is we would be, we'd be in bed and I'd say, let me tell you all the things I like about you. I want to tell you all the things I like about you. Now, and I ask her, tell me all the things you like about me, honey. And she'd, she'd sit there and she'd, she'd think, and I'd say, well, well, well go ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, can I give you some suggestions? I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just tell you, and then you say true or false. And then sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes what I did bear is I wrote the list and then I just had her sign it. Yeah. Okay. But it is important to affirm to affirm um, that the, the the qualities that you love and that you cherish, you know, and that so so it. I think if my if I asked my wife this question, do I tell you why how much I love you and why I love you, too many too much? She'd probably say yes. <laughs> In other words, it's oh, almost too no, much. They, they but, never get sick of that. Yeah, never. Right. Right. The only time that happens is when you got teenage kids and they see you kissing your wife and they, oh, gross. Old people <laughs> doing that. That is, oh, that's yeah. disgusting. Well, what about, what about taking your wife out on a date? Spending a, you know, you know what I'm going to say is, uh, okay. for example, um, uh, usually here we, when we go out for coffee in the mornings and I'll go get a hibiscus for my wife. Now, hey, do they let I've you go out, out to in, coffee. in Hawaii? They huh? let you go out to restaurants in Hawaii? Well, yeah, Are they allowing that? Yeah, Kai Coffee. It's Hawaiian coffee. But we, uh, but I, but uh, uh, not always, but, but, and a lot of times I'm on my way to get a flower, then we start talking, and I forget to get the flower. But she knows at least once or twice a week she's going to receive a hibiscus from me. And the thing about a hibiscus flower is even while they're on the bush, they only last one day. They open up in the morning and they close it in the, when the sun sets. That's what love is. You have to bring her that flower every day in some way or, 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 or other you need to you need to be with her and, and and so like yesterday my wife and I I took her out for breakfast we used to go out more often for breakfast and now we choose to go out less but we go to a nicer place you know so it's more special uh, and we were and, and then and so so to just just say I just want this time for just you and me we turn off our phones and we sit and 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 my wife is so peaceful I have to give her time to just I need to give her time to to, for my own energy level to subside. And then there's this beautiful conversation will take place. But we need to actually set goals. I will, take my, I will take my wife out on a date at least twice a month. You know, or I will spend, I will bring, we need to write it into our Google calendar. Oh, today's the day I give her a flower. You know, we need, as men, we need to actually have, actually do that until it becomes a habit, right? Then it becomes a habit. We're talking about Let Dr. Me qualify. Yeah, go ahead. Let me qualify. We, then we got to take a break away. Go ahead. Okay, take the break. I'll qualify when you come back. We're talking with uh, Dr. Dr. Ray. No, go ahead, Ray. I want you to finish that point, and then we'll then we'll okay. Then we'll come back. Two things. What you say is true. My wife and I decided we're going to go out on Tuesdays and Fridays. I go out on Tuesdays, she goes out on Fridays. And you've been having a so great that, relationship ever yeah, since. That, that, that oh, works. Now, oh. they, had, they had an interesting study done, Bear, about taking your wife out on a date. Oh. What they found was this. Dates work if, if there is not a attitude, an attitude of scolding or negativism or oh. anything else during the week. Oh. In other words, the day-to-day -day treatment right. of your wife will make that date something she wants or more or less says, are you trying to compensate for the way you treat me the oh, rest of the goodness. time? Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's heavy. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. 
Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to tell you, you out, the women out there, how much we appreciate you. You know, we actually have so many women that follow our ministry, maybe as many or more than men. And uh, about uh, a year ago, I was telling my wife, we gotta, we got to start w- reaching out to the women who love our ministry. Um, I think one of the things is that they love to listen in on what we're telling the men, but also they really get a, get a, a lot out of it just for themselves personally. And I said, yeah, we got to take care of our mama bears. And I realized that is exactly the right word to describe our, our women followers. And then my, my son Jeremiah came in the next day and goes, hey, Dad, remember when we had our cabin in Montana, how fierce those mama bears were? Like out of the clear blue sky. And I go, yeah, that's it. That's the thing about the mama bears is they're fiercely loyal and uh, uh, to their uh, to their family, and it's your 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 you mama bears out there praying for our ministry and praying for the men in, in your lives that have such an impact uh, on the men. But we have a place now for the mama bears. We have the Mama Bears Mug Club, which is also a secret fa- Facebook group where the women can get together. And we have Shandy Brooke there sharing her daily readings and insights. And, and the women posting and, and conversing with each other, praying for each other, inspiring each other, encouraging each other, and really having that kind of uh, uh, front of the porch uh, experience that I used to see women have when I was a kid, when they would when they would gather together in the in the mid afternoons and, and have a, have coffee or something before the kids got home. It's a place for the women to gather together and encourage each other. So go to go to uh, the school. It's actually at bearschoolofmanliness.com, and you can go there and click the button to join the Mama Bears. So we, we would love for you to do that. We have Dr. Ray Garendi with us. Dr. Ray, we've been talking about, about men and, and them cherishing their woman. I would like to ask you now about uh, men uh, as fathers. What, what would be the, the, the key things you would say to men in terms of um, their fatherhood? Let me start, Bear, by telling you something I regret as a father. When I used to pray my nighttime prayers, I'd crawl into bed and I'd put the blankets over me and I would say my prayers. All the kids saw was daddy was laying in bed. That's all. Mm. They didn't see daddy kneeling by the bed. If I would have knelt by the bed, they could have seen their dad praying. Instead, Mm. I was sloppy. I just got into bed. Mm. Or when one of the reasons we had 10 kids is so that we could pray the rosary better. You know, typically I told my wife, I said, when we pray the rosary, I want to levitate praying it in Aramaic above broken glass. That's really, I think, the better way to pray it. I've always thought so. But, yeah, I mean, you know that. Goes without saying. So, <laughs> so we had 10 kids, so each of us got a Hail Mary. Mm. Well, guess who, guess which one? of our 12 member family most often lost his place (laughs) me you should just say the our father and then you would but that's it i'd say i'd say uh glory be to no dad it's another hail mary oh okay Mm -hmm. so yeah my sloppiness my wife was definitely more obvious in her devotion life than mm-hmm. I was. So that's one of my regrets. That is definitely mm-hmm. one of my regrets. The, 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 the children, you know, I, I, you know, like I have a, a prayer chair here. This is my media center over there is my CPA land center. And then I have a, a prayer chair where I also do my writing. 
Is that and the one with the cushion on it that I saw right there? It's got it. I go to sleep on it. I'll tell you, when you I'm know, praying. you talk about how tough you are in the surfing stuff, and you got a big cushion on your I have chair. To, uh, yeah, I have to get up high enough to, to, to so I don't have to rearrange my camera. But no, no, no but I, I think what I, I went to visit a friend of mine, Tom Guthrie, in Minneapolis a few years ago, and I have known him through my life for a long time, over 30 years, probably longer. And I went into the same house that they've lived in the same house since I knew him. And I walked in, and I realized that's the chair I remember Tom used to pray in. His Bible used to be there next to the chair. And that chair was old now, and it had like another kind of a, bl- a cloth of some sort to cover it because it was old and the leather was crinkling, uh, just like his skin was, not mine. And uh, But that chair and the same Bible, it was a dog-eared Bible, but his children, as they grew up, they knew this is where Daddy sits when he prays. He, he, he led them by example, right? You're showing them the way. Don't just tell them. Fasc- fascinating study done. That was a, not a study. It was actually a survey, Bear. This is what they said. Now, this, was, this is older. I, I think the numbers are less now. But at the time, they said, if neither parent takes the children to church, there's about a 20% chance those children will be going to church when they're adults. If mom only takes the children to church, there's about a 50% chance those children as adults will go to church. If mom and dad take the children to church, there's about a 70 to 80% chance that as adults, they'll go to church. If dad only takes the children to church, it is equal to the percentage if both mom and dad take the children to church. That says it all. There's, there is a role for fathers, and that role is called leadership. And you lead by example. One of the things that I found is that nowadays, my grandmother came from Italy. She was third grade. If the priest said it, now, by the way, Bear, my mother, my grandmother went to St. Anthony's Parish in Canton, Ohio, which was the parish of Mother Angelica. And uh, I had my first communion there, my confirmation there. It was a rule. Are you Italian, taking you... credit for Mother Angelica oh, now? Well, Is that what I, you... think I, I think I kind of like try to model some things for her, you know. <laughs> and it was a rule. You're Italian. you got to go to St. Anthony's. Yeah. If the priest told my grandmother, this is what the Catholic Church says, my grandmother would have said, the priest said it. I believe it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. Nowadays, if you say that to a 14-year-old boy, he's going to say, why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why does the church teach that? The culture doesn't say that. The church Mm -hmm. says you don't live together before marriage. Everybody I know lives together before marriage. What are you talking about, Dad? Mm -hmm. We as fathers had better learn the beautiful rationale behind our faith Mm -hmm. because you've got to be able to explain it. You can't just tell it. Right. And so, you know, we as men, one of the things we need to know as fathers is we need to know our faith. I think, you know, the catechism, you know, I do that daily catechism uh, mm-hmm. teaching on Facebook Live, and then we post it to the man, to the School of Manliness. If um, I were there, I'd see it. If I was allowed in your School of Manliness, I would dude, see it. Dude, it. the school is based on your life. We can't have I have a better chance entering the Mama Bear once. <laughs> but um, the catechism is so beautiful. I have a friend now that's uh, his wife is Catholic and I haven't seen him for since high school. I met saw him again a couple months ago. And uh, he's asking really hard questions in his Protestant Bible studies that they can't seem to answer. And I, I started to point him out to the catechism. It, the catechism itself says you can read it uh, uh, as Lectio Divina. In other words, read a half a page or one paragraph or one page a day. I've read all the way through it, you know, like a student would, and that's good. But you can just work your way through one page a day, and uh, you'll go. You, you will begin to really know not just it, know know your faith, know what you believe, know why you believe it, know know the sacraments, and really be because you should, as Peter said, give a reason for your hope. You know that you should actually be able to explain your faith to someone. Now, in some sense, my mother used to say, "Christianity is an elevator religion." You can tell them the gospel on the way from the first floor to the 25th floor. Jesus loves you, has a perfect plan for your life. He died for your sins uh, to forgive you. Uh, ask him into your life and, and ask him to forgive you. But then, uh, if you, but if you want to go uh, to the higher floors, right, if you want to take the express elevator, the Catholic, the catechism, just amazing. 
just amazing. So deep. It's so beautiful. The truth and the way it's shared is so beautiful. It's like a cathedral. Bear, when, it, when I was in my 30s, I left the church. Was that last week? When you're in the third, in your third, <laughs> yeah, okay, hey, uh, yeah, you've brought me back. Uh, two, yeah, thank you. Two years ago, you and I did a a podcast together, and I said, "Man, I'll tell you what, I want to be, I want to be holy like that dude." Now, given what happened to me, I was a new atheist. Bear, mm. the old atheist makes sense. The old atheist says, "Nietzsche, there's Nietzsche, no, yeah, yeah, yeah." There's no the God, so I can do what I want. Yeah, the new ones are done. The new, yeah. the new atheist says there is a God, but he thinks just like me. Oh, that's a much more that's a okay. that's a much more dangerous atheism, and that's that what I was. So true. That is so true. That's what I was. I left the church for eight years, and my view was, you know, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, but pretty much on my terms. I can kind of I can kind of decide what's moral. I can decide what's good, and as as I struggled, as those eight years I was in the desert, not knowing where I was gone, and I was bouncing from evangelical church to evangelical church. I prayed to God. I said, you said you would give me faith if I asked. What's taken you so long? Now, I was hoping, it, you know, a day is as a thousand years. I'm in big trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, I found out later looking back on it, Bear, that God knew me better than I knew myself, of course. Mm -hmm. And he made me struggle. He made me read. He made mm -hmm. me go back and listen to everybody I could listen to because I had questions and doubts, and I wanted answers from smart people. Because of that, I am now able to be on Catholic media because had I not struggled, I wouldn't have searched. Had I not searched, I wouldn't have some answers to anything anybody calls me because I had the same depth of doubt mm -hmm. and struggles. Yeah, Thomas the Downer, for example, gave us one of the greatest lessons we know that jesus body was was real you know he touched his physical body and his wounds were real um and it's also the concept of faith seeking understanding but i like you uh drifted from the church for a while i wanted to go deeper with god and i had been under catechized and i didn't have direction and so i went into the non-denominational churches and eventually i just said i want to go deeper you know, like is that all there is and through dr stephen ray's book uh crossing the tiber and my dad becoming a catholic deacon and sharing with me about the magisterium of the church, I returned to the church. Uh, but, you know, the, the problem was during that time, when I was seeking was when I was raising my children. And so they didn't get to see their father in that time of really understanding the church. I, I had a love for God, but it was, there's, it was, it was a kind of a, a spiritual stew that was going on. I was zealous to go deeper with God. Uh, and it took that that season in my life to to get to that place. So you men that that have are fortunate enough to be in the church, uh, ground your your children in the faith and know your faith, so that when they're older, they 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 it'll be clear to them. They'll understand why they're doing what they're doing. We're, we're talking we're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi about fatherhood. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki with a deep adventure moment. You know, one of my closest friends, great surfer by the way, Gerard Middleton, loves the Lord, was raised by a mother and father that he deeply loves, especially his father. They did so much together. But you know, these weren't his biological parents. He was adopted. And just a couple months ago, he discovered and got to meet his biological mother and found out who his father was who had recently passed away. But you know, he loves his parents. In Hawaii, when you're adopted, the word that's used is hanai. You are hanai into the family. I actually live on Queen Lilio Kolani's estate. My house is built on her estate. She was not a biological child of the Kamehameha lineage. She was hanai into that family. And when she was hanai in, in a lot of ways, when you're a Hanai child, you're actually in a lot of ways considered more special or more important because you didn't happen, you were chosen to come into that family. Well, Jesus says, the Bible says, that we have been given the spirit of adoption, wherewith we cry out, Abba, Father. When I'm in Israel, I hear the little children call their, their father, Abba, Abba. And when the disciples said, Jesus, teach us how to pray, he said, pray like this 
our Father. Our Father in heaven, He's a loving God. He isn't an angry God that you need to appease. He's a loving God that you want to please. He wants to grab you and take you on adventures. He wants to see you expand your horizons and explore uh, new possibilities. Your Father has made you part of the royal family. With the power and the blessings that come with that, you can pray and you can see miraculous things happen. Welcome to the family of God. You are Hanai. This is Bear Wozniak with DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, gain traction in your pursuit of manly virtue through our 36-month new school of manliness and participate in our new non-Facebook Man Cave community. We journey together through three years of written, video, and audio lessons. Plus, you have an online toolbox to help you set a new trajectory in your life and help enable you to stay on course. All are available on our smartphone app and on your PC. Go to deepadventure.com and join the new school of manliness. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak. Our guest today is Dr. Ray Garendi. We want to invite everybody to go to uh, our Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. You, we have all kinds of content for you there. Dr. Ray, Ray we're talking about fatherhood. What can we as men, uh, what, what can we as men do? We, you know, each child is unique. How do we reach out to, we, we have children, but we need to also treat each of them as an individual. What can we do to build relationship with each child? Do not be afraid to be countercultural. The culture is going in a direction that if you parented by consensus as a father, I can almost guarantee you would misguide your children. They are getting smartphones too early. They are being exposed to things that assault their souls. They are having access to computer places and people and pictures that will take them away from what you're trying to teach. So the first thing I'm going to give the fathers is, and, and I see this bear more than I see it from the mothers. The mothers are more protective. The fathers are the ones more likely just to float along with the cultural direction and say dumb things like, ah, it probably won't hurt them. Yeah, you know, it won't hurt them. Yeah, I fell down 12 stairs when I was 14 years old. It didn't hurt me, but I don't want to fall down 12 stairs every time I'm going to get hurt. Mm. So. I tell the fathers, be protective, delay cultural socialization so that the things you're trying to teach have a chance to soak in. You don't want an 11 year old being assaulted by the culture because I'll tell you, the culture will beat you. It's more entertaining. It's more fast paced. It's more seductive. It will misshape your child's soul. One of the saddest things I see, Bear, is a father and a mother sitting in my office with a 17 year old or a 20 year old and they look at me and these were decent Catholic folks and they say, what happened? We didn't raise him this way. What mm. happened? Mm. And I will tell them, I believe you. I know you didn't raise him this way, but you underestimated what did. The culture mm. did. So I tell fathers, protect those kids from that culture out there that is trying to misshape their souls. 
and you got to delay it. Well, come on, you, you can't protect them from the real world. Nobody's trying to protect them from the real world. You're trying to protect their innocence for a few years longer so that what you're trying to teach has a chance to take root. Because if you don't, what you're trying to teach is just going to be sprinkled on sand. It you know, won't like sink w- in. When you, when you see a, a young child growing, it's very athletic. You know, an athlete, a, 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 a kid that you can see, that's, this kid's going to be a good athlete. You don't take him to the weight room. It's not where you don't, you don't start there. You teach him the fundamentals of, 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 of body movement and, 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 and athleticism. But their young bones and their young muscles are not ready to bodybuild at the age of four or five or six or seven or eight, right? And that's right. what you're asking the kid to do when you, when you release them too early uh, to the culture. Uh, they're not. They don't have the resistance training of of, of heavy lifting. And they're not. That's and they're right. not able to. So you need to take that that time and to cultivate them. And I know, like with my children, I'd always take one. Whenever I went to do an errand, I would take one of my children alone. Let's go to the hardware store. Just one of them, and just have talk story time with them. You know, just just be with them, and have that little opportunity because that's what the Bible says to do. It says, while you're on the way with your child, train them in the way that they should go. When they grow, they will not depart from it. And that growth just isn't as Christian or in, 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 our, in their moral makeup or in their, their understanding, but <clears throat> you also train them in the way to say, you know, that you can kind of, you know, you have these kind of gifts and talents, don't you? What do you like to do? Yeah, I like to do that. Well, that's probably the way that you should go. Maybe you can develop those. Let me get you in, into this type of extra curricular activity or this class or something but we also as men uh, i have a good one of our members of the man cave ted scarpino asked him the other day we were having our zoom call-ups uh with the other men on 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 the zoom do you take your kids to uh soccer practice no i coach soccer practice you know that type of thing that type of involvement of the man and it and and it'll take a sacrifice but the men need to the men what what about um, doing our very best to get them into a Catholic school, or, or in some cases, a lot of people are, are homeschooling now because the public schools are just are dangerous. And to, then to send your kid off to a to a, a university where they're just going to get inculcated with, you know, what, what what do you say to them about that whole that whole education uh, element? In the last thirty years, my ideas have shifted radically, and they've shifted radically, Bear, because I've seen the destruction. I've seen what happens. You see it in your office, don't you? All all the time. And these are from good families, by the way. These aren't families that you look at and go, well, they've been pathological since day one. No, 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 no. These are good people who tried to raise their kids well. First thing I say is, I used to say homeschooling's an option. Now I say, if you can homeschool, homeschool. And if you're going to go to a Catholic school, make sure it is a faithful Catholic school. Right. Don't let it be a private school with a little bit of Catholicism painted over top of it. Right. Okay. That's that's does more harm than good. Yes, it does. And there are surveys. You'll 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 appreciate this survey. What they found was that if a kid went to a Catholic college, in name only, basically a Catholic college, he had more chance to lose his faith and to change his morals by the time he graduated than if he went to a public college. Wow. And, an and the reason for that is he got a watered down form of the faith. Well, that's what Jesus said. He said, I wish that you were hot or cold. Yeah. But yeah. because you're lukewarm, the actual word is I will vomit you. I'll explosive vomit you out of my mouth. Um, because it's you're you kind of like bad advertising for Jesus. Yeah, this is what Jesus is. He's a nice guy, you know. And these are the nice things that you can do. And, I, and all roads lead to heaven, and the way to heaven is wide, you know. So you get that watered down version, and it's it's more deadly than being hot or cold. I will tell parents, think hard about sending your kid to college away. Right. Me too. If he needs a degree that he can only get from a faraway college. That is a consideration. But for the average Bachelor of Arts degree, that he's gonna rack up 30, 40, 50 grand's worth of loan to go have the college experience, likely lose his faith, and come out, here's the kicker, Bear, come out with a degree that 50% of the time he is not gonna get a job in that degree. You can get a job at Starbucks. 10, well, after 10 years, he's 90% of the time he's not going to get a job. And, in that and kids don't always have to go to college. I think trade schools are just a tremendous option for, mo- for may- maybe most. And you I know, advise like a, if you a, can do, do it locally. Have them live at home. 
go to a I two-year agree. community college, then consider your options. I but think this, you're right. This, this whole idea of, okay, well, you want to go to the university of nine states away because you want the college experience and you visited it and they got a nice community there and you want to go there and you want to live this life there unsupervised. I'm telling parents, Co-ed don't dorms. do it. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Things don't have it. changed from back in the day. I mean, they really Radically. have. And, and for a kid that's uh, 18 years old or 19 years old to go away to college, they're not ready for it. You know, it, it, even just to go to college if they're staying at your at staying with you. I know for me, I think it was halfway through my sophomore year when I moved out of the house and got and, and moved into a, a, a dorm, a men's dorm, and then got my own apartment. I, I, I think most people, so many people, their their maturity is delayed. They say men are not men now until later in life, and I guess that must be true for women too. But men, the the give your give your give you a chance to season season that person's. Um, um, your child's uh, uh, foundation as they go into that new, if they go into the college experience, be there with them for a year or so as they're, as they're getting grounded in that. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi. What is the last minute and a half you can, you can share of your, your, your wisdom with the men? What would you challenge them and what would you give them as a, as a direction to go for, to get traction as, a, as fathers? If your kids drift off or reject the way you raise them, you want it to be because they had to go through you, not because you stepped aside. Oh my goodness. If my kids are gonna be resentful of me, if they're gonna look at me like I'm a Neanderthal throwback, if they're gonna look at the rest of the culture and say, how could all those people be wrong and you be right, dad? Then I want to do what I thought was best so that I can live with myself. That I don't have to say, well, I compromised because I was afraid they'd be right. upset or resentful or deceptive. That's not going to happen. I don't want it to happen. My kids are all grown now, Bear. Well, you Some know, the, of them going to... Go ahead. Me, me too, Dr. Ray. I mean, I, we got to take... But I, uh, the stepping into the breach concept, dude, the breach runs right through your living room. You got to step into that breach right there. And the other thing is I think men, men, men need to realize you are the... Like here in Hawaii, we have Makapu'u Lighthouse. That lighthouse... Uh, is a beacon it, it doesn't move uh, as you as a man stand for your faith the further your children leave you or pull away from that faith it's like a rubber band they can feel the tension of the distance but if you keep moving a lighthouse that keeps moving isn't a lighthouse at all it's dangerous and your kids are going to end up on the rocks we're talking to dr ray grandy this whole time dr ray i forgot to tell him that your website is drray.com drray.com if they want any of the books, they can go there. My most recent book, Bear, is Jesus, the Master Psychologist. Listen to him. Oh, beautiful. we got to get you on again as soon as possible. We love you, Dr. Ray. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.